Ahsoka episode 6, the one where we get to see Sabine fighting. It's impressive stuff. I knew this was going to be a great episode when after days and weeks in solitary confinement, the Sith continued to give her her makeup bag every day. I would think this would be an opportunity for reflection. I try to avoid that. I can understand why. Nothing is more intimidating than somebody wearing eyeliner. And so you can spot a true warrior like Ahsoka, who's barely in the episode. <laughs> she appears at the start for about 30 seconds and then vanishes for the rest of it. Just goes to show no matter how low Disney sinks, they always put in a bright side for the audience somewhere. But we start with an Anne Summers photo shoot. That's such a gorgeous shot it could go on a London underground as beach body ready. Intergalactic travel within a star whale. Even the way Tennant says it is like, I can't believe I'm in this shit. How did somebody write that down without getting fired? I can't believe it. Now I really have done it all. Yeah, that's why you sound like the depressed robot from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Meanwhile, we've got Ahsoka here who looks bored off her face. This show's so entertaining, even she's daydreaming out the window. As you can see, the two characters are spread far enough apart, I can't keep them both on the screen at the same time. I was gonna say, we focus on Ahsoka because she's a human actress and therefore will have an actual expression on her face compared to a robot. Then I realised we were talking about Ahsoka. Focus on the person with more expression, shall we? I remember them from the stories you were Immediately done more acting than Ahsoka has the entire series. History of the Galaxy parts one, two, and three. One being the best, of course. Yeah, the Old Republic, back when there were actually Jedi and Sith fighting each other in big numbers. I still have those stories in my archive memory. Would you like to hear one? I think I speak for everybody when say no. Not right now. I even speak for Ahsoka apparently. Even Ahsoka is fed up of her own show. I thought this was my week off. The last thing I want you to do is give me another story about this pissing thing. Perhaps you have a story for me. This guy has raised thousands of generations of Jedi and still hasn't learned not to ask questions he doesn't want the answer to. But she tells him about Sabine and how she just surrendered to the Sith. Yeah, I'm evil now. I don't know whether that was supposed to be a plot twist, but I just assumed it when I found out she had purple hair. People say stereotypes are bad, but if that's true, why is Sabine so accurate? That is troubling. She could have ended this. You're right, that is troubling. I didn't like us before, but now I found out we could have had three weeks less episodes of Ahsoka. I hate her even worse. No Thrawn, no war. And no Ezra. All right, mate, I already didn't dislike her. You don't have to keep piling it on. It's like they decided to make an entire episode about Sabine, but just wanted to make sure you hated her as much as possible first. Look at all the good things you could have had. Now, here's the person responsible for you not getting any of it. She was fated to make that choice. Nonsense. She made a personal decision and she's responsible and accountable for her own decisions. Unless you're gonna say that even in Star Wars, we can go to an entirely different galaxy and still, I'm not to blame for all my own problems that I've caused myself. We can't blame the patriarchy, so now it's fate. There wasn't enough time to prepare her to make the right one. So she wasn't fated to do it then, she just made her own decision and you're like, I couldn't convince her otherwise. There's one thing we've learned in this show, love, it's that there's a lot you can't do. The Force provides you with insight. But when's she gonna start showing that then? We're gonna have to wait for season two. Perhaps for Sabine, it was the only choice. No, we were there. The evil guy said, give me the thing so that I can take over the universe, and she went, all right then, mate. And don't come back. So they travel along in the whale with presumably Kit facing the other way in front of them. Your choice. I mean, tell me that doesn't look like Kit. You would have thought that a whale traveling through hyperspace would have at least shut its gob first, not just in constantly grinning, showing its teeth, just so the people inside its mouth have a light to go by in the camera. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Someone who didn't look like a gremlin once wrote Star Wars that was actually good. Part six, far, far away. But it took him a long time to think of that title. Then again, if you write an episode that can't even compete with the far away tree, I'm not really sure you should be striking for higher wages. But then we cut over to Sabine in solitary confinement with her makeup bag. I don't know, maybe it's like space makeup. Much like space whales, it's almost identical to the actual thing, it's just bullshit. I'd also question why if she's a prisoner, she, she cares what her jailers think about her appearance. But apparently, no. Just because you've been captured by the most evil people in the universe doesn't mean you can't take pride in your appearance for them. Who knows, maybe she's hoping she can fall in love with her jailer and live happily ever after. There's only reason I can think why she'd want to put makeup on for him. Sprinkle it on my bum and make my gentle wind smell like cinnamon. We've got on our big chunky handcuffs and I can't say there's a makeup table in sight, but maybe it's on the other side of the camera. It's not on the other side of the camera. They should have just got 
got her to put it on blind and then come out looking like a clown. So that would have been funny. But as she's been in this absolutely tiny cell for days or weeks at this point, doesn't tell you how long they've been in space, but they've got to travel between galaxies. So I think weeks and months is sort of the minimum time frame you'd be expecting. And along comes the vastly better actor. I was hoping for a room with a view. Instead, you decided to give him one whenever he came to visit you. You find your situation confining. She is in solitary confinement. Clues in the pissing name. I would think this would be an opportunity for reflection. I try to avoid that. I can understand why. <laughs> I've already watched this once, I forgot you were so savage. Yeah, if I was you, I wouldn't want to talk to myself either, you dumb cow. Most interesting thing about your cell is that we never have to clean it because even bacteria can't stand being around you. That's why Sabine will actually live an incredibly long time. No virus in the universe actually wants to enter a body. So she walks up to the cell door and we get an image like something out of a 1970s pop music video. We had a deal. You promised me I would see Ezra again. Yeah, and she's still banging on about Ezra Miller. AKA the Bengal ghouls. I can't believe the guy who wants to start an intergalactic war could possibly have not kept his word. Especially when he's not even the one in power. So he walks off and she starts getting angry. Hey, hey, we had a deal. I put on all this makeup for you. The least you could do is listen to me. We had a deal. Also proving once again that it's impossible to be intimidating when you've got makeup on. Speaking of intimidating. It's amazing the sense of presence you can get when you're not two foot tall and built like a drain pipe. Speaking of being two foot tall and built like a drain pipe, we're supposed to believe that one of these is his boss and that he would have chosen the other one as a warrior. This is a show about space wizards and you're still managing to push the line of incredulity. I actually salute you. So she starts whining at him about Sabine. You still mean to follow through on your promise to her? I honestly couldn't care less. I don't know why you care either. You're his boss. If you don't want her on the ship, just fire out an airlock. No one will mind. Her focus to find Ezra Bridger blinds her. I believe she can still be of some use to us. Okay, explain how. No, seriously, explain how. This is a key part of your plot, and yet you don't give a single reason for him to be doing any of this. In fact, the only part you've hinted at that could be true is, I don't want to kill more Jedi. Which makes him look soft. So, so far, the only thing that makes sense in your story is that one of your villains isn't intimidating or scary in any way, shape, or form. Congratulations. I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. But at that point, they arrive at Thrawn's planet, I do like the design of the ship, you know, everything's balanced with all the engines and then we just stuck one at the bottom for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I mean, we could have just mirrored this up to the top and made it entirely symmetrical and make sense, but no. We just put this one here in case we needed to flip over our ship. If we need to decide something based off heads and tails and don't have a coin, well, don't worry. We could just spin the ship for a bit. So they talk about what this planet is, how it was the end of the trip for the space whales. And they chose this planet to come to die. Those aren't actually rings of the planet. It's a graveyard. Of course, even in that we do decide to contradict ourselves. The end of the migration route used by the star whales. Yes, it's the end of a migration route. And it's also... The ancient homeworld of my ancestors, the Death of Mary. Well, that was a stroke of luck. The home of my ancestors just happened to be this planet where all the space whales ended their journey on. And that allowed us to work out intergalactic travel because... My people were among the first to harness and ride the creatures. Great! We've worked everything out then. Not a single contradiction so far. So far. This planet was a simple migration route. And therefore, when they arrived, we would ride them. And learning to ride them is how we traveled the galaxies. Great. The whales came here to die. What? Is it the end of a migration route where they learned to ride them? Or did they come here to die? Pick two. If they came here to die, they definitely couldn't have learned to ride them around the universe because they'd be dead. If they came here to die, why was it the end of a migration route? Or do the whales top themselves at the end of every migration it doesn't seem like they'd live very long. And if all this is true, why are those whales coming here in the first place? Or are they all just going to top themselves when they reach the end of it? I think we can classify this as being overwritten. We just kept adding things that this scene was until we hit bullshit. Iridia is a graveyard. Yeah, that's the only reason why they added that last bit in, by the way. So we could get some cool shots of some bones afterwards to make it seem dark and foreboding, even if it doesn't actually make any sense. It's all right, though. You're not going to think about this because nobody who's a fan of Ahsoka thinks about the plot, largely because there isn't any plot. If you want the summary of this episode, they travel to a planet and then Sabine walks around it for a bit. Wait till we get to the space snails. You have seen nothing yet. But the Eye of Sauron flies across the planet, and as you can see, that one engine at the bottom would definitely make your 
your ship fly around in circles unless you've got an engine at the top to balance it out. They are receiving a beacon signal from the planet's surface. Well, I'm glad you sent a text message ahead to tell me you were coming, I guess. But they go and fetch Sabine. I don't know, maybe this is just her makeup delivery for the day. Is that why they've sent Blondie in so that she can put it on for her? We're not going to give you a mirror, so stand up while I do your lipstick. Gonna at least give her some wet wipes for the night. She's had this stuff caked on for months. It's, it's going to do horrific things to her paws. <laughs> this might be the most I've ever spoken up makeup in my entire life. So they travel down to the planet's surface. While we're in the ship, everyone obviously stares at one another. Oh, I'm looking at you. Oh, no, I'm looking at you. I'm going to look at this droid over here. I'm gonna look at him now. And we even fly past a content creator live reacting to this very footage. You know it's a YouTuber because their mouth is at least 90% of full gape. If he opens it any wider, his jaw's gonna dislocate and he'll swallow his own sofa. I don't even know you, I don't want you, you just get out! But we fly along our 24 karat gold spaceship past another reactor. <laughs> and promptly resume, everybody staring at each other again. Before eventually landing Snoop Dogg's shuttlecraft. I can't be the only one thinking, there's no way that's to scale. If you're that tall in the doorway, Balin will be as tall as the doorway. Balin is as tall as the doorway. Yeah, on the inside, there's loads of pissing room. I knew these were witches, but I didn't realise they'd invented a TARDIS. But we walk out and find new Stonehenge. They walk up to the random people in the distance who should only have one question for them. <laughs> who the f***? Are you you traveled here from an entirely other galaxy you can't tell me you emailed ahead or something we will be visiting you next tuesday welcome child of dathomir how do you know who she is oh welcome child of somebody that's not been here for thousands of years we're going to greet you as if we met you last tuesday it's fine thank you great mother yes because in this universe thousands of years can pass and everyone just treats it like it was wednesday you heard our call to you in the dream there's no way you saw that in a dream and thought i'm gonna dedicate my life to doing what it says. I mean, if that's how you look, I can understand why you thought it was so important that Sabine get a makeup bag. Oh, I've just realised who that is. It's Claudia Black from Farscape. I'm not sure whether managing to make her look like that is incredible or horrific, but they say that they sent a message out across the galaxies for her and sent her visions to guide her there. It's wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. Yeah, if we just make up something nonsensical, we pray that you never think about it or how it might work. We're just gonna say force and have all the people on Twitter defend it. More witches. You're quick, love, aren't you? These people have been talking for about three minutes at this point, and she should have gone, oh, Witches! Didn't you gather that when they went, You're one of our ancestors, the children of Dathomir. Welcome, child of Dathomir. I thought that was the clue myself. Even Sabine's like, oh, I can't believe you're that slow. And when Sabine is taking the piss out of your intelligence, you know you're in trouble. That hair dye's nuked her prefrontal cortex to within an inch of its life. Have we waited for you? That's gotta be disappointing. You wait around at Stonehenge for thousands of years and the best thing you get is Sabine. At that point, it's probably just better to give up. Take the Mr. Bean route, beam down to a different alien planet and just act like an idiot for the rest of your life. You'll have more fun. And you came as Thrawn promised. Why on earth are you helping Thrawn? then. Thrawn arrives in your galaxy and goes, if you wait here for thousands of years, Sabine will turn up, send him back, find the whale closest to death, and fire him off into the void. It reeks of Jedi. All right, love, calm down. She's been in solitary confinement for months at this point. Yeah, they gave her a makeup bag, but there was no shower in that cell. In fact, there wasn't even a toilet in that cell. In those conditions, she's allowed to whiff a little bit. If you don't like it, push her off the cliff into the water. We'll all have a great time. Wait, you did not take a sniff. He did! He took a massive sniff. It reeks of Jedi. I can't smell anything. That's because you've been around her too long, love. You've got used to the stench. The terrier's got to look like, I've been telling you, love, that you needed to sort that out, but have you done anything about it? No. Now you're embarrassing all of us. It is dangerous. Christ, how bad did you smell? Dangerous? How long did you keep her trapped up in there? What are you gonna do? Bottle it and start using it as biological weaponry? Sooner armpits are gonna be banned by the Geneva Convention. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. So they get their newfangled balls ready. Leanne, Tony, check your two balls very carefully. These ones, not gold. They're not even really spherical. It's almost like, have we got any of those golden balls? Don't worry, we've got golden balls at home. For the break, Leanne and Tony had accumulated just 20 pounds. So they decide to use the force, or if it's not the force, you know, it's witchcraft. It's incredibly bizarre to see force users talk about witchcraft. 
that as if it's magic. Dude, you move things with your mind. It's not that impressive. But they send off the little tiny balls. They spin around Sabine and fire off little laser beams. Now, obviously, lasers are renowned for one thing. Yeah, they can tighten around you and then lead you places. It will wait in solitude. Admittedly, calling Sabine an it. Based economy. Best part of the entire show. As you can see, the front ball is actively tugging her with a laser beam. It's good to know those little tiny spheres are so multifunctional. Although they are incredibly based when it takes her downstairs. Hey, we had a deal. Where is Ezra? It's interesting you ask the question because Balin, presumably, is trying to help you find him. As the little orbs take her downstairs. I did briefly think as she went over the edge, it was just a straight drop into a pit. I almost wet myself laughing. Unfortunately, it dragged her down the stairs into a prison cell with one window. That's what I mean. Balin was trying to keep his promise to you. You wanted to find Ezra Miller, so he took you to the nearest prison. He was in a new galaxy, and that's the most likely to be true. The Mad Goose Wizard. But everyone's waiting around on Stonehenge. Stand around for a really long time. This is a land of dreams and madness. Yeah, the land of dreams. Drab, dreary, and devoid of all life. It's basically the dreams of people in Slough. They're like, yes, this world's horrific, but at least it's better than Slough. But he talks about how when he was at the Jedi Temple, they would tell stories of this place, and the little terrier has some words of wisdom for him. Sometimes stories are just stories. Yeah, thanks for that, love. Tune in next time to find out her opinion on why a boat floats. So he does a speech about how history repeats the fall of the Jedi, the rise of the Empire. It repeats again and again and again. Like he's pissing Ahsoka reviews. Right, maybe it'll go somewhere this week. No, we're gonna walk a place again and again and again. And isn't it our turn now? Yes, that's the problem, love. Are you gonna do anything with your episode? No. When our alliance with Thrawn finally bring us into power. Everything's about power. She's at least a California accurate character. Next week, she's gonna go on strike and refuse to do what the witches say until she can have a minimum of apprentice rooms of at least 38 different people that all have to obey her. That sort of power is fleeting. Yeah, it only lasts as long as you're on strike. So he waffles on a load of trash about absolutely nothing, but you're supposed to think it's incredibly deep. Over to Sabine now, trapped in a room on her own again. She decides that maybe I do have a way out of this. Maybe I can use the force. Like, calm down, love. You, you Couldn't you have done that before? You've been traveling along in a ship for months. Have you not been, like, practicing or something? No, you're just like, now I'm here and I'm on camera. Now's the chance to try for once. So she just lifts her hand up. Stand back, lads. I've seen it done. Close her eyes. So we're supposed to... Ooh, the force. Of course, at that moment, the walls start to shake. Dirt and cement falls down the wall. And you're like, <gasps> is Sabine finally mastered the force that she doesn't even have access to? Even she's like, well, this is a load of trash. I shouldn't be able to do this. It's all right, though, because a ship's arrived. And it's so massive, the force of its engines are shaking the very ground itself. Now, for some reason, the top of it is extremely damaged and has just never been bothered to be repaired. And we've got an entire bottom section of the ship cut out specifically so we can land on Stonehenge rather than than just sending a ship down, which would be far easier and more efficient than bringing the entire capital ship down to the Earth. Yes, cutting out a big, massive, gaping chasm in the bottom of your ship definitely makes a lot more sense than sending a shuttlecraft. So the ship lands on Stonehenge, and at this point, I'm just thinking, somebody's watched Stargate too many times. Next thing you're going to tell me, Stonehenge charges it up as a power source or something. And as we all line up to look into the ship, we find an army. Now, admittedly, it's an impressively sized, if incredibly dirty army. I mean, they're essentially wearing white plastic. You could have just got a damp cloth and got most of this junk off. Personally, I'm not impressed if your military can't even wash itself. Then again, we did have a massive discussion about how much Sabine stinks, so maybe it's just normal in this galaxy. We've even got Goldface, where they made a mask for him to make him permanently miserable. Are all of the fans of this show going to come out with great theories about who he is? Before it turns out, he's nobody. I mean, it already happened with Marok, a character so boring I never even learned his name. I'm still not sure it's Marok. I just took a guess at whatever it kind of might have been. Might have been Malrock. But as we do have an angry Mr. Bean, I can only assume he's English. Uh, that's gaslighting. That's what it is. Looking as happy as a standard British tourist anywhere in the world. He's like, oh, that's just what I needed. More pissing tourists getting in my way. But you're a tourist. Yeah, I know, but I should be the only tourist. And then we get Thrawn. Yes, the soft-spoken, not intimidating at all general who's supposed to be the entire villain of the piece. And yet they don't get any reason why anyone should actually be intimidated by him. I've seen a bowl of oranges that was scarier than this bloke. 
because they were blue as well. Hence the fear. Mold is far scarier than whatever that is. This is a guy that's supposed to be one of the scariest generals of all time, really focused on those details. Except when it comes to his diet. So then we cut over to her, don't know why, her face never has an expression on it. I think you could actually get her acted by a cardboard cutout and get exactly the same effect. You're really supposed to think this is impressive. <laughs> What was first, just a dream. Yeah, first opening line, so scary. You should imagine wiping out a planet or something. Instead, he just looks like he owns Twitter. Great mothers, I salute you. Now you just sound like Mr. T. Wait a minute, don't bring anyone mother into this. You put now mothers all over the world. Again, you can't be intimidating when you've got the guy going, I love you, mommy. It doesn't work. Mother, there is no other like you, mother, so treat her right. This is Enoch. Oh, he's been introduced with a name. Twitter's definitely gonna go off and go, maybe it's Ezra. And you're like, yeah, but we see Ezra in this episode. Yeah, well, maybe he's both of them. Maybe he's a double agent. What if it's Mephisto? He shall begin the cargo transfer as per my agreement with the Great Mothers. So intimidating. I'm so glad that you made an entire show where the villain was a soft-spoken blueberry. So far, the only good thing that could come out of this casting is we find out what color a smurf goes when you choke it. Maybe that's what his colored badges are. It's a color palette of the different shades he goes at different points. I have seen the catacombs. You mean catacombs, not catacups. Catacombs. They're not catacups. Catacombs. Catacombs. You know combs? I may not use one, but I know how to pronounce it. Thank you very much. At least three rotate. Look how short she is. You've made her look like she's one foot tall. It's even worse because she's trying to seem imperious with her nose tilted upwards. You can't be intimidated by tiny little women. It's not possible. Yes, I'm definitely in charge here. Oh, just piss off. Look at the size difference. What if you got a standing like Mary Poppins? Maybe he's not even blue, it's just space chimney soot. They have brought a prisoner. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. We had to talk about Sabine again. So he says, well, you didn't tell me about this, and they've got a really strange response. We did not see it. Yeah, it's because they've only just arrived, mate. Oh, we can predict the future. Except Sabine. <laughs> Even the Force shies away from having to think about her. So he perks up. It's like, well, I was the one that brought the loose thread. Her name's Sabine. Now there's a familiar name. Yeah, you just behead her then and there. I've met her before, mate. I'm not putting up with her again. I went to a different galaxy to get away from that bint. Is she still as insufferable as she used to be, or did she get worse? Yeah, the, yeah, they normally get worse. She'd be of great use to us. Yeah, we could strap her to the front of the ship when we go to hyperspace. Them whales think they can stop us traveling through space. Let's see how they match up against Sabine's massively dense head. So then she meets the prawn. Sabine Wren. Thrawn. You can understand why he's an intimidating villain. What a delight it is after so long to see a familiar face. Stop it, Thrawn. I can't handle the pressure anymore. The tension can be cut with a spoon. Check your two balls very carefully. You couldn't show this episode in London. It'd get confiscated by the police as a dangerous weapon. So, Disp, have you spoken about this episode at all in this review? No, I've been trying not to, to be honest. I've been here for far too long. I don't even know what I've said. I understand it is you I have to thank for my escape from exile. So she starts asking about, where's Ezra Miller? He goes, oh yeah, your friends. That will reshape our entire galaxy. And she comes back with the same witty retort that you would expect of somebody in her position. Just answer the question. It must have taken you at least one sip of coffee to write that one. We're doing a character drama where all the characters have to interact and talk to each other in order to provide some kind of tension and show you more about their inner feelings and workings as a human being. Just answer my pissing question. Like I say, purple hair really just tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> need for hostility. Get out, you stupid girl. And Thrawn continues to be as intimidating as you would expect from a blue guy with a receding hairline and a dad bod. I'm aware of your agreement with Balon Skull and I intend to honor it. I don't know why. Literally no one cares about his agreement, even him. I don't even know why she cares about her agreement. Oh, you went off with the evil guy that promised you something. This is worse than secret invasion. Well, now he lets her go with provisions, amounts, and intel about where he might be. Turns out their intel is just like, follow the crabs. And this wouldn't be the first time that Sabine has visited Ezra Miller over crabs. It's me. So that's it? You're just gonna let me walk out of here? Yeah, I agree. This storyline is farcical, isn't it? It is strange how you put that in your own show, though, to be honest. So he tells her that when my starship leaves, you'll be stranded here forever. Remember, this is the villain saying that, the person you're supposed to dislike, and yet so far you've appeared and said you're gonna kill Sabine. I'm all for you. Take over the galaxy. It's not as if it can get any worse. It's also quite possible that your friend is dead. No, I don't believe that. In this show, the more insufferable they are, the more impossible it is to get rid of them.
them. I mean, Ahsoka fell off a cliff and drowned for 10 hours and she's still here. There's no way they've kicked Ezra out the show. I'm not that lucky. You've gambled the fate of your galaxy on that belief. Yeah, that, that is a stupid thing to do, isn't it? I'm glad you keep having people in the show tell Sabine just how stupid she is as a person. Now, if you can only take that same energy to the script writers that wrote the stupid storyline to begin with, maybe we could start fixing your show. You wouldn't understand. I love the people that think this show is actually complicated. Oh, you just don't understand it? You wouldn't understand the depths of their belief and emotion that goes into each of these meta-narratives. Perhaps not. You should take his face into a Dulux paint shop, get him to run it through one of their laser scanners and print out a new hair dye for you. I think it'd suit you. You could even match his eyes. What's that got to do with Ahsoka? I don't know. It's just more interesting than what's happening on the screen. I'd rather not waste any more time. You don't want to waste any more time. You should see how long I've been recording. What kind of ride you got around here? Yeah, that's Ahsoka, always carrying about an extra ride. I actually think this one will be right up your street, love. There it is. It's furry with teeth and you're from California. I think you'll get along. So the stormtroopers make it get down on the ground because even though it's obviously no bigger than a horse standing up, Sabine is about half a foot tall. There's no way she'd get on top of a horse. She'd need one of them stepping blocks like Galadriel did. So after the animal has prostrated itself for her, and even then she struggled and had to step in the stirrups to get on it. What you can't tell from the scene is it's only about the same height as one of Commander Riker's chairs, which is why she gets on it the same way. Be warned, nomads wander this wasteland. What's her response gonna be? I am nomad! <laughs> Here are your weapons. Why are we giving her weapons? She would have died even easier if you didn't give her any weapons. Die well. Also, why are you speaking like a Klingon? Today is a good day to die. And as you're Sabine, every day is a good day to die. We live in hope. So she rides off into the wasteland of Slough. We get a conversation about why on earth we've just let her survive for absolutely no reason whatsoever. She is on a false errand. Indeed. You may follow her. You were gonna follow her, you could have just killed her while she was there. Remember, Thrawn is meant to be scary and intimidating. And instead, we've just made him look like an idiot. Oh no, it's actually a deep interwoven plan that he set up. Ah, oh, see, he let her go so she could find Ezra Miller and then they can kill them. They're pissing off to another galaxy, why do they care? Ezra Miller's been sitting on this planet for months with the crab people, it's never even bothered him before. Now you have the perfect time to kill Sabine, it, who's utterly defenseless. She's like, no, let's let her go and find some more people as backup. He couldn't be less intimidating if you actually just put him in a pink tutu and made him dance. I mean, if anything, Ken and Barbie proved once you've already been humiliated this much, it really does nothing to harm your reputation. But then Sabine's wandering along, we have a random fight for absolutely no reason whatsoever. The animal knows that they're about to get jumped, and so he does the same thing, and leaves Sabine to die. I salute you, dear dog. It was worth a try. So she gets out a piece of junk, and a guy takes a shot from a rock that she's entirely unaware of as a force-using Mandalorian. Yeah, I'm not gonna to see that guy right in front of me. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, he shot the piece of trash in front of her. How very unlucky for him. But then the animal goes on its hind legs and throws her to the ground. At this point, happiest I've been in the episode. Like, if you want a shot that accurately summarizes the Ahsoka series, that's about as close as you're gonna get. <laughs> Best part of the show. Unfortunately, she's not out yet. So she stands up and gets her blasters out. No, wait! They must have met Sabine before. No, wait! Piss off! And everybody becomes a stormtrooper and nobody can hit anything. Whether we're, for some reason, miles out of cover. She defeats the object of standing behind cover. But luckily, Sabine decided to shoot the cover anyway. And she keeps getting shot in the back, but luckily her Mandalorian armor that for some reason Thrawn decided to give her protects her. No. So she's firing off blaster shots, missing all of them. And despite being in cover with ranged weapons, she decides to leave her cover to dive out into the open and get shot some more. Yeah, it wasn't a smart move. She immediately gets disarmed. Although for some reason can stop this guy's staff weapon with her wrist and then she need him in the armpit. Everybody knows the most dangerous part of your body is the armpit. Need him in the armpit, agony. And I don't mean she dislocated his shoulder. I mean, she need him in the armpit. <laughs> Oh, it's even worse than I thought. She didn't knee him in the armpit. She gently kneed him in the side because she's too short to reach his armpit, which at least might have dislocated his shoulder. Instead, this is as high as I can reach. So this is where you're getting hit. But at least she does use him as a body shield for a bit. Oh no, we're just gonna throw away our cover for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I don't know why he decided to take a swing with his staff weapon when he's got a gun. So she grapples this guy over here, shoots the other one at point blank range, fair play, and then blocks this guy's shot. 
when she hadn't even seen it. Are we supposed to be like, oh, that's her force powers awakening? But then she takes a rifle blast straight to the chest, gets completely disarmed, and decides finally to pull out the lightsaber. Now, I'm not a fan of Sabine using a lightsaber, largely because whenever she waves it around, it's like she's holding a dangerous poisonous snake, and it's very unwieldy, and it's like she's scared of it herself. It's not smooth, fast, and precise, which is when lightsaber fights look the best. This is the actual speed of her first moves with the lightsaber. I mean, come on. Even your first move, what was this? Why did we spin it first? Sometimes I take the piss about the spinning around and things, but I'm not actually against it as long as it doesn't look stupid when played at normal speed the first time through. But even that time, I'm like, what was happening there? If you notice, this guy behind her just entirely forgot she existed. Like, here she is, she's attacking the guy on the right, so what's this guy going to do mid-fight, right? Let's, let's see where he goes. Oh, he, he decided to swing in an area where she's never existed in the entire history of the scene. Let's watch that again, shall we? She's over on the right. She's over on the right. Please don't swing over here somewhere. That'd be weird. Okay, he's mid-swing. We can see Sabine. Surely he's going to swing in front of him, on her side, where he knows she is. Oh, no, no. We were committed over here for some reason, were we? It's okay, though. He could recover. All he's got to do is swing around to the right and not continue attacking the shadow monster in front of him. No, he's just going to carry on in front of him. Okay. It's difficult to know where he is now. I'm pretty sure he's the guy on the right-hand side. <laughs> They've got different helmets on. Let's track where those people were. Massive fancy helmet was the same guy that attacked the thin air. And then as she runs around to the right, he is going to teleport all the way over the right-hand side of the screen for some reason. Here he is right behind her. And we cut to him on the opposite side of the screen with this random guy teleporting into existence. Sabine decides to kick a guy rather than actually use a lightsaber on him. Yep, I mean, obviously, Sabine's feet more dangerous than glowing plasma. <laughs> And she does it again. She even has an opportunity to use her lightsaber in this one. You've blocked his attack with your braces. All you've got to do now is swing at him with your lightsaber. As there should be absolutely no way his weapon blocks a lightsaber. No, we're just going to attack his weapon with the lightsaber for some reason. And then use our deadly feet. <laughs> I don't know what you think you're doing, love, to be honest. So then Jesus decides, oh, I am actually going to cut your weapon in half. And then I'm going to slash the other half of it as well to cut it down to size. I don't know why his weapon couldn't resist a lightsaber, but all the others could. We don't think about that in our scenes. You see, this is a show about space wizards. It means that anything we do doesn't actually have to make sense with anything else we do, because we genuinely believe our audience are a bunch of mouth breathers. We know that because we read our Twitter feed. So then she picks up a piece of trash and it's damaged. We get the two evil people chasing her for absolutely no reason whatsoever at this point. You had all the time in the world to kill her. You decided couldn't be bothered. Then you chased her across the planet to kill her afterwards. They have a discussion about how many troops Thrawn has. He's like, well, we've lost some people since we've been here. That's expected, unless somehow you started breeding. It matters not whether Ren and Bridge are killed or stranded here. But what are you doing? You could have just killed Sabine whenever you wanted. Instead, you released her so she could track down Ezra Miller and then sent people after her to wipe them out. And now you're like, but it doesn't matter. If it didn't matter, why are you doing it, you stupid? This is the only thing happening in your episode and you're supposedly intimidating villain is going, but all of that is irrelevant. So like, yes, I think that too. But you've based your entire show around it. If it doesn't matter if they get left behind, why didn't you just kill Sabine and leave? It would have been so much easier. The same can be said for your two mercenaries. He doesn't even care about the mercenaries either. So then why are you putting so much effort into them? So Sabine's walking along, being an arsehole. I'm sorry I should be more specific. That's been the entire season. Being an arsehole to the dog. You! You abandoned me! Would have thought you would have been used to it by now, love. You do realise your dad hasn't been getting a pint of milk for the last 20 years, don't you? Let's face it, who could actually suffer your existence? You're lucky it came back. And even then, it probably only came back so you could take the pissing saddle off it. Not come back for your sparkling company, love. Should have known you were a coward. No, he just wants his saddle taken off. You are the person that put it on after all. So the animal's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Look, can you just take this off my back and I'll piss off and leave you to die? So he chases after her and she's continuing to walk off angrily, you know, like she does everything. 
and she's like, go and leave me. It just wants you to take the saddle off and it'll probably leave. It just doesn't want to have to carry around your useless trash. So she storms off angrily again. At this point, she's probably just looking for a door so she can slam it. And the dog comes back like, take, take your junk off my back. I don't have to carry this trash around the rest of my life. It was bad enough having to carry you around for a couple of hours until eventually she has the gall to do this. <laughs> Yeah, she's rolling her eyes. Sabine, rolling her eyes at somebody else. At that point, the entire Star Wars universe should just implode on itself. We have written something that's so impossibly stupid to actually happen that the, the, the universe just collapses in on itself as there's now no logical foundation to its existence. It's impossible for anyone to exist who is more insufferable than Sabine. Therefore, she cannot roll her eyes at anybody else. Fine. I'll give you another chance. <laughs> Throw her off a cliff. You've got one chance to do what's right, doggo. You've already dumped her once. This time, make it count. I'll give you another chance, but you better not bail on me this time. <laughs> That's right. If she's on fire, don't bail water on her. The oxygen on the planet will run out eventually. She'll go out naturally. It's fine. Well, friend, this is your world. That's how she treats her friends, by the way. That was her being nice. Tell you, the hair color's never wrong. So the doggo starts sniffing her. You got something? Yeah, you stink, love. We've already established that in the episode, remember? It reeks of Jedi. If even the three 800-year-old witches could smell it, then uh, a dog certainly could. So he has to get down in the filth and the dirt just so she's tall enough to climb on top of him before she finds some new terrain. What happens next, I can only assume, was written in a bar after somebody had had far too many drinks. Am I missing something? Love, if I had to point out everything that you missed in an episode, we'd be here all day. I'm not sure you've grasped anything so far in the series. You still think you can use the force, love. But as the doggo goes round, he starts sniffing all of these different rocks that appear. It's a rock. You're embarrassing yourself. At least he's in the right show for it. But then he decides to lick one. <laughs> and it springs up. I'm a crab person wearing a suit underneath my rock. And he obviously has one of those incredible defense mechanisms where it doesn't work if somebody licks you because a predator will never try and lick its food. That's why it's such a great defense mechanism. Either way, she decides to pull her gun on the little crab child. It's Sabine. It's no surprise that she wants to murder innocent little children. She is Californian after all. So this guy just runs away, petrified, falls over. Sabine's still pointing the gun at it until it turns around and sees her. <laughs> and hides as a rock again. She's still pointing the weapon at it. Okay, yeah, that trick's over. Why are you pointing a gun at a little child creature, you insane bint? Oh. So the little guy peeks out from underneath his rock. We're still pointing the gun at it. Get up, come on, I can see you there. I can see you there. Why are you afraid of me? If you don't stop being afraid, I'm gonna blow you away. You've got such a way with kids, love. Why don't you kick him in the face? See if he'll be more friendly then. So eventually, after the little suited crab child looks up at her again, she finally decides to put the gun down. I'm not gonna hurt you. Well, you got a funny way of showing it, love. Although after they've met you, they're probably gonna want to hurt you. I think it's just like a natural state of being in the universe. So we have these little weird crab people for far too long. She's having to stop the dog eating the crab person and she tries to make friends with it, which is stupid because she's Sabine and nobody can be friends with Sabine. <laughs> went about as well as expected. But then, randomly, he notices the symbol on her shoulder. This? <gasps> you like this? Yeah, you traveled to another galaxy to meet a crab person who just decided to like the tattoo on your armor. That's why he's kicking such a fuss up about it, love. He's just a big fan of the art. It's also why he's got the symbol himself on a little necklace. She's like, uh, what? What is happening? This is a load of nonsense. I'm like, yes, yes, it is. She went off on an alien planet in a random direction following a dog, and the dog sniffed out some water Water and randomly found the same people who could take her to Ezra Miller. Don't worry, it's a show about space wizards. It doesn't need to make any sense. Remember, this is a show that's so complicated, you have to watch Rebels to even understand it. Yeah, because it's so complicated. Everything just randomly happens. But really, just because you don't understand the meta narrative, the peace folks, if you were actually intelligent, you would understand just how deep and complicated randomly walking along and finding new plot devices actually is. So the academic nature of the storytelling, which are only coexist along a transcendental story narrative, which focuses on the tri-analogous 
momentum of an interdimensional pile of bullshit. So then he starts signaling all the other little crab people. And it turns out they just spring up everywhere. He's like, what on earth? Food, mate. Food. Can I eat that one? And that one over there. And we basically got a group of shelled Harfoots. The Harfoots went along carrying their homes on their back. And these people go along carrying uh, their homes on their back. Or at least you'd assume so, considering they're meant to be crabs. I did admittedly think they were snails for all of this. Because I was less bothered about paying attention and more just trying to survive. Either way, she makes a lot of sense. No, Ezra Bridger. Yeah, of course you do, love. You just traveled the world and found the group he's living with. They eventually lead her off. We get the Sith people following her, finding the destruction she's left in her wake. Looks like she survived. Don't have to sound so disappointed, mate. I'll be disappointed enough for the both of us. And while they're standing among the corpses of the bandits, a load of bandits appear above them and he's like, we can make friends. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's like, you've got lightsabers standing among the corpses of a load of people who died to lightsabers. They're not gonna believe you didn't do it, mate. But she follows the crab people, or the snails, depending on which you prefer. And as you know, both crabs and snails are renowned for carrying their house along on their back. So if you were going to put them into live action as a more sentient creature, what would you do for them? Well, obviously, you'd put them in a little town where they all live in houses for the species that is world-renowned for carrying its house around with it. So she walks along, and you're like, well, these houses seem very, uh, well, they just look like normal houses houses, don't they? This could basically be any settlement, not a specifically a crab one. And that's because they basically just turn these into n normal people. Yeah, they're all supposed to be crabs. They're all sitting down on little chests, carrying along pots, setting up beds with babies in. Why would a baby crab need a hammock? It's got a shell on its back. It already rocks. We've even got one of them on top of a house setting up a satellite dish. But nothing about these need to be crabs at all. You've just taken a normal village and on, yeah, the crab people now. But then as they wander along. I knew I could count on you. Yes, it's the worst actor to ever exist in the history of the universe. You've just met your long lost love that has literally traveled across galaxies to meet you. And how much enthusiasm do you put into your voice? I knew I could count on you. I'd want fries with that, mate. <laughs> Calm down, love. Don't get too excited. You've literally spent months traveling to a different galaxy and betrayed every single person who's ever been on your side, possibly risking the destruction of your home universe. And you're just like, yeah, you know, might smile a bit of a meme, I guess. <laughs> You could have got more excitement if you'd opened up your fast food bag and found a free large fries. He's like, see, always put an extra large fries in the bag, makes the customer happy. <laughs> oh, I threw in some free chicken nuggets as well. This is amazing. <laughs> There's no way he added extra dip though. He can't have done that. No, sure took you long enough. Careful, mate, don't start acting. You might throw your back out. Well, you didn't exactly tell any of us where you were going. It's hardly Romeo and Juliet, is it? They managed to convince everyone they'd top themselves when they met on a balcony and started talking about 2B pencils. These two people are acting like they've met on a bench at the DMV. That's because I didn't know where I was going. I don't know how to get my license. I've never been here before. Typical. Always a plan. Never the bridesmaids. I don't know. It worked, didn't it? No, you got stranded on a different galaxy and she had to betray every single person in the galaxy to come and meet you, only to give off less excitement than a dog that's just got given a treat. Didn't it? No, you were about to destroy a galaxy, you stupid little twat. <sighs> It worked. No, it didn't work. That's why you're here. You betrayed every single person you've ever known. <laughs> Oh, careful, love. Don't put too much effort into it. We at least want a pay rise if you're going to show some emotion for once. So she thanks him for the free fast food on a bonus order of extra large chips. He's just happy to have done something worthwhile for once in his life. Finally, she'll get the calories she deserves. And all the crab people stare at them while wondering, we've got shells. Why do we live in pissing houses? Why does this house have a TV aerial on it? What are you picking up? Crab Rock FM? Oh, no. Sometimes you disgust yourself. It couldn't be anything else. It's just for the hard-earned money she spent to keep clothes on my back. She's like, oh, have you been working out? No, no, he hasn't. I see my friends found you. No, you see, she was wandering along and her dog licked one of them. And that's how she found you on a planet. I suggest that the writers of the show 
go outside with a dog, and don't come back until one of their dogs licks me. See how long that takes you. That ought to be an interesting documentary. Start a YouTube channel about it. No one's gonna watch. Now, there was one funny part of the show, admittedly. That's when the crab starts feeding the dog so the dog doesn't eat all of their infants. In fact, how did you find me? <laughs> Yeah, it was funny. We're 40 minutes in. I finally complimented the writers. I, I think my work here is done. I consider that good going myself. How did you get here? Uh, magic, basically. Let's not talk about that. Because I did betray everyone I've ever loved. All the good things in the universe. And now basically billions of people, if not hundreds of billions of people, are going to die. All because of you. But let's not talk about it. We've always got next week. I just want to be happy that I found you. Let's not talk about how I've destroyed the universe. Besides, Ahsoka said it was fate. I can't be held responsible for fate. I just decided to do all the actions, but it's not actually any of my fault. I can't be held responsible for anything. Not with this hairstyle. After all this time, can I have that? No. Largely because you're an evil cow which has destroyed the universe. I think that's bad enough that no, you shouldn't be happy for the rest of your life. Would be a, at least a minimum punishment. <laughs> Bless you. Hola. Stop saying hola. Hola. You're not Spanish. You never stay in one place for very long. It's all right, Sabine's used to that. No one can stand her for very long, so she has to move. Let's help them pack up. Wait, what? You never stay in one place for very long. Let's help them pack up. Pack up? They've got pissing houses, mate. How on earth do you think that the tiny crab people are gonna move houses? They've already got one on the back. They can't carry two. That's why it's stupid that the people with houses already had another house. What, they got like a holiday home or something? Sabine. I can't stand you. Thanks for coming. Well, that's close enough, I guess. He'll learn eventually. Can't wait to go home. Well, he already learned. Yeah, you're not going home, mate. Her plan never included going home. She's destroyed that universe. She doesn't care about that anymore. She was going to live here with your little crab people friends. Make a nice stew out of them or something. So he goes back to his three mums. And they're like, another one comes, another Jedi. It's not the dead Ahsoka, is it? But Balin taught me she was dead. I mean, he never looked at the body or actually attacked her with his lightsaber because he could have done, but he decided to attack her weapon instead. We shall consider Ahsoka Tano alive until we know otherwise. Yeah, imagine that. Actually attacking somebody you intend to kill with your lightsaber rather than the weapon in front of him. Although maybe he just thought it was pointless because lightsabers don't actually kill anybody anymore. So he's just like, we need to prepare. I want to know who her dad is. It's like, yeah, you are really intimidating, aren't you, mate? No background, history, home world, her master, everything. If I could know her shoe size, I can defeat her. If a star whale approaches Peridia, destroyed with prejudice. That's how you know the writers really think he's evil. Can't believe he'd admit to having prejudice. This guy can wipe out an entire galaxy and still be a moral person in the eyes of a Hollywood Californian. But he admits he's prejudiced. Oh, beyond reproach. Now he said that, you know they're gonna make him suffer. By the aid of your dark magic. Yeah, they couldn't even predict Sabine was coming. Although maybe it's because she's so dark and evil, she already just blended into the dark magic. The thread of destiny demands it. In other words, yeah, we wanted to do that anyway, mate. We're just going to claim it's destiny. And then you're supposed to think he's really evil because he's got a special soundtrack. Not cords when you're zooming in on his eyeballs. That's so evil. No wonder he had a ship called the Eye of Sauron. I don't know what that show was, but what I do know is nothing happened in it. We traveled to a planet and then we walked around a bit. We stumbled over the only people on the entire planet who could tell us where the person that nobody else has been able to find was. And the entire thing was so unbelievably awful that I just, I just started waffling on about anything, desperately trying to entertain myself. I saw a question going, why do people not like Ahsoka? To which I can only say, what exactly was it about that episode that you actually liked? Not in general terms, what specifically was the scene where you were like, this is the best Star Wars ever, it's giving us everything? Because I don't know, maybe I just don't gape my open jaw wide enough to really and truly understand the feelings and the emotional depth of what I'm witnessing. Maybe it all goes over my head and if only I'd watched Rebels, I would truly be able to understand the actual complexities of the subatomic structure of the Star Wars canon. Or maybe just 
maybe. Filoni is a talentless hack and the entire show is boring trash. But don't worry, he got paid a lot of money for it. And if there's one thing we know for sure, it's that money in Hollywood always equates to actual quality entertainment. That's why the, st that's why the writers are on strike for more, because the more zeros you put in their bank account, the higher the quality of entertainment that they produce. And that's why the writers would immediately come off strike if you just suggested to them tying their pay to the success of their shows and forcing them to give audiences what they want rather than whatever pissing mess this was. Well, those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Like the video for like the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future and I will see you in the next one. Uh, bye bye